Hello, Besley here, and welcome to my coding and randomizer showcase. So over here, I want to show off the credit sequence that I made. It might not seem super impressive to make a, a credits, but all of this uses sprite text, and you can just paste in whatever text you would like. And it has these different images that uh, you can cycle through as the text appears on screen. It was a real pain to make, but that's one thing that I've made. And here I have the cell randomizer. This one's for FE8. And I'm just going to show off some of the more recent features. So since last year, I added the ability to filter your characters as well as your classes. Uh, by some different parameters. So let's see if this works. If I want to do like an all thief run, right now I have it set as the game uh, just from FE8. So I just have to change that to random. Let's see if that updates. Yeah. So now I have different thieves from throughout the games. I think that's a cool feature. Um, you can also change them if you don't want to use a specific character. Like say I instead I feel like using a Wayne from Awakening and I want their class to be a thief. Sure. Maybe I want them to have a hundred strength growth, I can do that too. And then I can press confirm to actually start the game like that. I can also change it to have uh, different, I can have the vanilla classes for right now. You can get rid of new classes over here. And then I have Danger Bones, which I'll show in a second. Right now we're working on adding some new uh, color palettes for the different characters, but there's over a thousand playable characters in this, so there's quite a bit. I'll go ahead and start the game. I'll just skip ahead so that I can start showing off some of the features in game. Okay, so you see uh, we have an assassin as well. And you can hear there's some random background music going on. I've also added some more to the debugger since, since last year. I don't remember exactly what I had last year. Probably some stuff in, in the page 3 would be newer. So I can access the supply with anyone through it. I can also have a look at the list of items. Just exchange items that way. Oh, I can have units, um, any units that have not acted at the end of the turn, they'll just do something. So that's kind of useful, maybe, if you want to play like that, I don't know. I can hear some random battle music going on still. They're gonna attack. And I was able to take them out, that's fine. All that's left is their leader, yeah. We've all seen that before. Okay. No. Oops, wrong one. Okay, back in the debugger, I think I want to turn autoplay off. Oh, I recently was working on this graphics viewer thing, so I can look at all the different portraits in the game and all that. It's just some more debug features. Oh, the CG one only works 
if you have uh, an Ethi Builder patch that allows more than one CG to be shown. I haven't put that in here. Oh, the skills thing is by Nat, not by me. Or by Nate. I, I don't know. Um, but I added it to the debugger at some point. Oh yes, that's some cool features. I recently made uh, what I call Danger Bones. You can see this enemy has become a little bit more darker red, and they're shaking a little bit. They're anticipating the battle. They want to come attack me. So it, it's just like in more modern FE games, where they have those little lines that show up. You can see if I move closer at all, that he'll be able to attack me. So maybe I want that, maybe I don't. Okay, there's O'Neill. So yes, my uh, thief run is going pretty smoothly for this uh, first chapter. You can always go into config to change some things later on if you prefer. You can also become bosses. Now we don't have every single boss um, in the game, but we do have some. There are also some placeholders, so you see we haven't put in the Fates bosses yet, so it just shows Citizen and Gatekeeper. But there are some Awakening ones. So I can become this character if I want. And when I reload, you can see there's still a Thief. Also, shoutouts to Gary Top for making so many of these portraits, as well as all the artists who have been contributing. It's really amazing. Okay, let's see what's next. And I wanted to show off this hack that I did recently, where uh, music during battle can continue. That was uh, an Effie Builder patch. I wanted to make it so that it's toggleable. So you can choose in game if the music should stay the same during battles. I think it's not always the most fun to have uh, the music constantly interrupted. So it's a setting that I really enjoy. Uh, now we've finished this chapter. I also recently ported over a speed up animations thing over to FE6 and FE7. So all that is is just an option to be able to have animations play faster without using emulator speed up. That way the music is not disrupted. So it's Similar sort of idea. Apparently I also did this user interface hack since last FEE3. So it can install on any FEA hack, uh, but there's some different styles, so shoutouts to Stefano, Sakabala, Hypergamma Spaces, Fenrir, and Pikmin. So we can see that the user interface has changed. I like to have the toggles or settings for these things in the self-randomizer, but you could do it with a flag, like a global flag in-game, if you want to do it that way. I think that having these different styles is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. 
And here I want to show off the Advance Wars 2 self-randomizer that I did. So the seed for this is based on your first design room map. So the name that you input there. If it starts with an A, then stats will not be randomized. And if it starts with a B, then your maps will not be randomized. So right now I have both stats and maps randomized. Now if we try a war room, let's see what happens. I can use Andy. So you can see that uh, we have some bases and then there's a road that connects the two headquarters. So this map is randomized, I'm sure you can tell. And then I think I'll just exit this map, try a different one just to show off a couple of maps that it can make. Let's try this one. It was kind of fun to code this sort of thing. I'm not a big Advanced Wars 2 um, hacker, but I was able to figure out this much at least. Okay, here are the two headquarters are quite, quite nearby. Might be fun to try that. And there are a whole bunch of rivers. Kind of looks like a mess. But there are some patches that look like they kind of make sense. It's kind of like the toy box from Lash in that one chapter. I'll show one more. There's some different themes that it uses. So we saw like a road slash industrials, industrial theme as well as a river one. Let's see what this one looks like. Is it better or worse? Okay, there's a nice straight road. I see some pipes. Along with some patches of water. Okay, that's cool. Oh, I should also show that uh, their stats are randomized. So if you don't want that, you can change your design room name. It'd be kind of fun to do. Uh, and then when you do a co-power, it increases those stats. And if you don't feel like playing a map, say you're doing the campaign, you can just turn music off and on, and then it will just automatically clear the chapter for you. Okay, I hope that you enjoy that. And lastly, I think I'll just talk about another feature of the debugger. I can change uh, units into players if I feel like doing that. Might be a fun way to do uh, a playthrough of the game. And of course I can also, in the randomizer, I can become the bosses or I can also change who's who. So if I want to become someone in particular, sure, I'll do that. And then I'll make everyone turn into quote unquote Marth, which could be fun. So if you do like an oops, all Marths type playthrough, that could be fun too. You can make them the same class or not. Um, but anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed my showcase and that there's some tools here that uh, you might enjoy using, either in your own ROM hack or just playing one of the things that I've made. Anyway, bye now.